Hello and welcome to episode 93, I think it is, of 10,000 Stitches Podcast, a uh, currently bi-weekly podcast all about the joys of knitting. My name is Andy, and if you were looking for me on the interwebs, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Ravelry as Pearlbug, P-U-R-L-B-U-G. You can find my blog at thepearlbug.com, and then we have the 10,000 Stitches Podcast group on Ravelry. Oh, itchy nose. Uh. Okay. If you are looking for um, links to anything that I mentioned today, any patterns or shops or anything, um, if you're watching via the embedded video on the blog post or the Ravelry thread, everything will be linked right below the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, in the description box below the video, there will be a link to the blog post. You can go there and then again, everything will be linked right below the video. Uh, I'm currently recording on Sunday, May 6th, and this episode will go up on Tuesday, May 8th. Um, crazy to think that it's May already. Whoa. Um, but here in Richmond, at least, this past week definitely felt like summer. We had multiple days where I think it hit 90. So I am very glad that it has cooled down a little bit this weekend. That also means that I have the window in this room open, so you guys will probably hear some background street noise. Uh, sorry, not sorry, because I'm just happy to be able to have the windows open and not be running the air conditioner in May already. So... Yeah. Anyway, um, I have, I guess, a lot to talk about today in terms of like my knitting. And so we're going to do kind of the normal stuff, finished objects, works in progress, stuff like that. Um, I don't have any dyeing to show. Uh, I do need to talk about the knit along because as of right now, I have not put up the new threads, but this will guilt me into putting up the new threads before I put this episode up. We'll do a question of the week and then we'll do some chit chat at the end. So pretty normal episode. So let's jump right into it with some finished objects. I have two finished objects to show you guys, but neither of these I'm going to talk too long about because I've talked about both of them quite a bit in the past, but these are two pairs of socks that I think I finished up like really soon after the last episode. So these have been sitting finished for quite a while. Although as you can maybe see, I still haven't woven in the ends on them yet. So that's not good. But um, anyway, I will just pop one of each of these on a blocker so I can show you guys what they look like and we can, you know, get through this fairly quickly. Cause I know I've talked about these a lot before. <sighs> okay, so this first one is the paraphernalia socks. I know I've talked about these at length. This is using some of my hand dyed yarn. It has this really beautiful cable pattern on it. Uh, I started these over spring break back in March. And like I said, just finished them maybe a week, 10 days ish ago. Uh, so definitely took a little while, but that was because they sort of languished for a little while in between. This yarn is an 8020 Superwash Highland Nylon Blend, um, and it was dyed using coffee. And I knit these 68 stitches on a US 1, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. I'm pretty sure that either I currently have all of my notes on my Ravelry page for them, or I will put them up after I get done recording this. But I, I have a fair amount of notes, notes on kind of how I um, how I made these. So that's the paraphernalia socks. These are uh, knit for a friend of mine. And so now I will need to get these mailed off uh, to them you know, so they can actually have them. And then the other pair of socks is the second pair of the man friend socks. And so these are for Wesley. And I know I've shown these off multiple times. This yarn is the yarn that I got at Vogue Knitting Live. It's Yokogane yarns in the colorway Riverfish. And it's this really beautiful sort of gray brown with these little red, like kind of micro striping. Um, I really love it. I think he will love them as well. And this is a pair of short socks, obviously for him, because he likes short socks. And I'm planning on getting this pattern written up as a pattern that you can download and um, and knit yourself if you are interested, um, just as soon as I can get them photographed, which hopefully will be sometime this month, because Wesley is hopefully gonna come visit me sometime this month. So when that happens, I will get these photographed and then um, get that pattern written up. And it's just, it's sort of just a riff on my basic um, sock pattern, my exceedingly vanilla sock pattern. Um, so most of the pattern will be sort of just copied and pasted from that with a little bit in about the, um, you know, patterning on the top. And because these are a sort of non-standard size, I will provide explicit instructions for the heel turn and all of that stuff. So yeah, those are done too. So two pairs of socks done and dusted, pretty good feeling. Um, so let's talk about works in progress. 
And we'll start with a couple of works that are no longer in progress because they were frogged. And, and I want to talk about these only because I spent a significant amount of time on them. And so I want to talk about them so that it makes sense, like what I've been working on. So one of them, okay, so one of them, I forget exactly when I started this, but this is a sock that I had started and I was super excited about it um, to do sort of to go along with the current knit along, which I'll talk about later. But this is the pole dance pattern. And you can see I haven't totally frogged this yet because I wanted to have something to show for it. Um, and pole dance, I'll try and put a picture on the screen of, of what they are supposed to look like, but it's this really cool pattern where you sort of knit the cuff in one color and then you sort of knit half of your sock, but you knit it flat because you're only, you know, you're knitting back and forth. So, and it sort of spirals. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but like it's sort of, Winds, well, you'll see it in the picture, but it sort of spirals around the foot and then you come back in with the second color and you kind of fill in the gap um, of the other side of the sock. And then I think you knit the toe in the same color as the second color. And they look super cool. And when I was reading the pattern, I was like, yeah, I totally get how to do this. Like this will be no problem. And I did the first half just fine, no problems. And then I got to doing the second half and I don't know what happened, but it just, everything went wrong and by that time I was like you know what I'm sick of this like I'm not I'm not having it anymore so I just sort of gave up and so now that I've shown you I will frog it um but yeah I just it, I don't know I don't know what happened but whatever I'm, I'm over it because I've done socks like this before I've done the what was it the stripe tees socks I think is another pair of socks that sort of works on the same concept so I don't know why I wasn't able to figure it out this time but I just couldn't do it. So that's one failed project. And then another failed project, um, you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram, I put a little bit about it in my stories and then had just, a, again, another moment where I was just like, this isn't working out and frogged the whole thing. So um, the yarn that it was using was this yarn, which I showed a while ago. This is some yarn that I dyed up um, in sort of Viking, a Vikings themed colorway, the Minnesota Vikings, because they're my home team. Um, and so the this this is sort of this purple and white and then i have a couple of little gold mini skeins that went with it so this is 200 gram balls of yarn and sort of the project that i was envisioning was this scarf like i really wanted a nice big thick garter stitch scarf and so i <laughs> but i wanted to start from the center out so that i could use as much of this yarn as possible so what i was doing was i knit two sort of triangles sort of like the beginning of a basic triangle shawl and then I was going to sort of join them together at the middle and then on one side, you know, then sort of do the, the triangle thing going out. And then on the other side with the other ball, I would do the same thing going out and then finish them off. So the, the problem was not the execution. Like it was going fine. And I'll put a picture on the screen of kind of what, what my progress looked like. I had gotten to the point where I joined the two smaller center triangles together and I was working my way along. And then I sort of started to get worried about like how much yarn was I using up? And so I weighed, you know, my yarn and figured out like how much yarn was I using basically per row. And I realized that I was only going to be able to knit, I think, I think the total length was only going to be like 36 inches long, like, you know, out on both sides. And, and obviously that's not good. So I knew that I, I had made it too wide. I was going to have to make it narrower, but like, it just, again, it wasn't working out the way I wanted it to, so I just frogged it, and I may come back to it. Like, I, I kept my notes for it so I could come back to it later, um, but for now, it was frogged, and, and it was very sad, but I hope to come back to it again later. Another thing that I wasn't liking was at the width that I had it, the yarn wasn't pooling, which I know is what most people would prefer, but I kind of actually liked that the yarn was pooling at some of sort of the smaller widths of triangle. So I definitely think that I would maybe try and adjust it to get the yarn to actually pool. Um, because otherwise it just looked kind of muddy, if that makes sense. Like, like you couldn't see the distinct purple and white. So yeah, I just wasn't happy with it. So I frogged it. So that is two projects that were, and then were not. Which brings us to the whips that are actually still whips. So I have two current works in progress and they're both pretty small things. And one is sort of a half object. The other is almost a half object. 
Um, so we'll start with the older of the two. And this is based on a pattern which is called Leverds, I believe. Um, and it's a fingerless mitt pattern. And I say based on the pattern because the pattern, oh, there's a siren coming. This is my life. Okay. Um, the pattern is written in German and there is no English version. And I couldn't even find like in the projects, you know, someone who had like basically translated it into English. And, um, you know, there's lots of comments on the pattern saying like, hey, are you going to put out an English version? And the, the designer hasn't commented on any of those, which I mean, I'm not saying that they have to put out an English version. Like I realize, like that is very like Anglo-centric, I guess, of me to like think like, oh, you should put out an English version. Um, but the the point being that even though I minored in German in undergrad, I could not translate the pattern now. And especially for something like knitting, where it's like you have sort of a lot of very specific words that like were not the kind of words that I learned. Anyway. I looked at the pictures and I sort of went off of my knowledge of how you knit fingerless mitts and I came up with something that I think looks like the pictures. So I'm going to say it's based on the pattern. And so this is the first one. I have not put in the thumb yet because I'm just going to wait and do both of the thumbs um, in one fell swoop, but it's just a pretty plain basic fingerless mitt, um, except for one little detail. And again, those of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen this, but it has these little hems that have a contrasting color on the inside. So from the outside, it looks very plain and basic. It has these nice finished hems, which is another thing that I'm totally obsessed with, which you'll see when we get to my other work in progress. But um, yeah, so it has these nice little, you know, turned hems and um, it, oh, wrong hand. There we go. And it's, it's a pretty close fitting uh, mitt and you can, well, you may be able to see this. So I did some, let's see if I can get closer so I can actually show you some of some of the little details about it without also knocking over my microphone. Okay. So. Okay, so you can probably see here, right? So this is all just knit, you know, kind of whatever. And then here I started doing the increases on this, on like sort of the edge of the hand side. At the same time, that I was doing these increases for the thumb gusset. So, um, and then up at sort of after I separated for the thumb, you can see that I did some decreases. So I did some decreases along sort of like all four corners, I guess is how I would say. And so it fits very closely around the top of the fingers. I'm not sure like if I were to make another pair of these, if I would maybe make it a little bit looser on the top, but I kind of actually like it. Um, and then, like I said, I obviously still need to do the thumb. So that's what that looks like. And you know, you can just sort of, the, the little colored inside is not super visible except, you know, when you're looking for it. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this. I think it's gonna be really good for sort of those days when like you really want your hand to be covered and warm. Like this is sort of like an outside fingerless mitt, um, but, but you know, you can still use your fingers. So I am just pleased as punch with it. Um, really excited with how it came out. I will link to sort of the resources that I used to figure out how to sew down these hems because I've never done anything like this before. And I just think it is like the most amazing thing. And what's funny is I used to really hate finishing. Like I hated the idea of like sewing together a knitted project or like finishing anything. And now more and more, I'm starting to really enjoy the finishing process. Like I really enjoy Kitchener stitching closed to toe on a sock. I really enjoy this seaming process. Like. I just, cause it's very meditative, like, because at least for something like this, it's like, there's no stress involved with it. It's just like, oh, just keep going, right? Just every, every stitch, you need to seam that up. Same with like a Kitchener stitch toe. It's like, you just, every single loop, you just have to close up, right? Like there's nothing confusing about it. There's nothing hard about it. Um, but yeah, so I really, really love this. The second one is in progress, but it's not very far along. I think I just started it like last night. Um, and so I'm just sort of past the little turning row, um, which is a pearl row, which is kind of where you turn the hem. Um, and now I'm just working my way up the hand and I'll have to, of course, mirror all of my notes, um, to get the thumb gusset and everything. But I will try and once I get done with this, uh, 
put my notes, like all of my notes on my Ravelry page for whatever good they might do someone else. Um, just so that if other people want to do this and also can't speak German and translate the pattern, um, they can at least get what I got, um, you know, if that's at all useful to them. So that's my first work in progress. And then my second work in progress is a pair of socks. And this just shows how obsessed I am with these sort of um, knit hems because I did the same thing on this. So this is a little short sock, which you can see I'm decently far along. I think I maybe have probably 20 rows, less than 20 rows before I hit the toe. So um, yeah, I, I don't have very much longer left on this, but um, I definitely have been noticing a lack of short socks in my sort of hand knit sock wardrobe. Um, especially now that it's getting warm again, I really can't wear my tall socks anymore. Like it's really getting to be too hot for that. But I, I find that I can wear short um, wool socks in the summer because I don't find them to be any hotter necessarily than like regular cotton socks. Um, to me, like where the warmth comes in is like the, the height of the leg. But I find that like my feet get sweaty regardless of what kind of sock I'm wearing. So I don't feel like wool necessarily does any more damage than cotton. Um, and so I, I've decided that I'm going to devote some energy now to knitting some short socks. And I wanted some short socks that that were just cute at the top, you know, just like cute enough to poke out over the top of my shoes. And I really hate doing ribbing on socks. Like I don't mind it for tall socks, but for short socks, I really hate it. Um, because of course it, it becomes such a huge proportion of the rest of the sock. And, and I had just figured out how to do these knit hems. So this one has a cute little pe picot, pico, I don't know how to say it. P-I-C-O-T. I, I feel like it's French and I shouldn't pronounce the T, but I have no clue. But let's, uh, let's focus on this guy. So it has this cute little picot, pico, whatever, little, little hem on it. And again, it's, I already sewed it down on the inside here, so it's, Got that in there, and then it's just got that little, it's so cute. Um, and then, I guess while I have it up close, so so this is this is how it looks. Um, the yarn that is used for the top part of the sock is leftover yarn from my um, first poly that I knit, like a long, long time ago. It's a hand dyed yarn that I did. Um, it's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon um, blend. And then the rest of the sock is some leftovers from those um, knit like it's 1999 socks that I made for a friend of mine. Um, I had a decent amount left over. Like it, it was kind of, it's kind of a confusing amount because it's not really enough to do anything with by itself. But I, I've seen people do this before where basically they knit to the end of the gusset decreases with one color and then they switch to a different color for the foot. And I thought that'd be super cute because of course this will always be hidden really like within my shoe. And so it's just like a nice little surprise for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm using that for, for the foot on each of them to try and use up some more of this rainbow yarn. And then the rest I will, um, cause this came from a, a sock blank if you don't, if you weren't around for then. Um, and then the rest I'll just kind of put into my, um, my granny stripe blanket, but I didn't want to put like this much in because like I wanted to use it cause it's fun. So yeah, like I said, I'm pretty close to the end of this one and then I'll just get the other one started. This is being knit on US. Um, ones, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. I guess I forgot to mention, this is also being knit on a US size one, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. So yeah, pretty cool. Socks for my feet, socks for my hands, sock fun all around. Um, like I said, I am planning on knitting some more short socks. Like I think that's what I'm going to devote some of my energy to for a while. So if you have suggestions for like fun short sock patterns, let me know. Because of course I know I can just put any pattern on top of a pair of short socks and maybe that's what I'll start doing, but I don't necessarily want to knit all of them vanilla. Um, this one I'm doing it because, you know, this yarn is, is already enough, but I might want to spice some of them up with some patterns to go on top of them. Who knows? We'll see. So yeah, that's, that's the stuff that's, uh, that's in progress right now. And I guess really quickly, I'll talk about what's coming up next. And that is, I don't really know. Um, that's why it's really quick. So like I said, I want to knit more short socks. Um, I know I had been talking last week about wanting to knit the, or not last week, last time I recorded, wanting to knit the Rose Candy by uh, Martina Bem. And I do still want to knit that, of course. And last week I was like, yeah, I want to knit some more shawls because 
shawls. And then it got really hot. And I remember just how hot and sticky and gross it gets here in Virginia in the summer. And I think I'm gonna hold off on any big projects like that for right now, because especially with those big projects, because I tend to knit them at home, um, you know, because they're big. And I don't tend to keep the air on super high in my apartment. I I, um, I tend to keep it set maybe at like 80 or 82 because I'm stingy and I don't want to pay to have it cooled a lot. Um, the last thing I want when it's 80 degrees in here is to have like a big shawl resting on my lap. Um, so I think I'm going to hold off on some of those for a little while. So like I said, I'm going to do so a few more pairs of short socks. I might do another pair of these hand warmers and, you know, maybe like as a gift for someone as I sort of, you know, iron out the wrinkles and, and sort of what I have deciphered to be the pattern. Um, but otherwise I just don't really know. I, uh, I want to keep it pretty small and portable and light and easy for a little while, um, at least until I sort of get into the groove of summer stuff. I don't know why people are being so loud today. I don't know. Anyway, so that's, that's sort of my thoughts for what's coming up next. Basically just small stuff, um, you know, that I can just have fun with and finish quickly and then move on to the next thing for a little while. So like I said, I don't have any to di any dying to talk about this week. Um, so yeah, let's talk about some knit along stuff. Um, since the last time I recorded, the last knit along wrapped up, the Botanical Cal wrapped up, and the winner was, I believe it was post number 30, I don't have the number right in front of me. The, I think it was post number 30, it was Rabbit Bait, um, who is Ashton. Um, so I already sent off the prize for that, so that's super cool. And we are now almost a week into, or well, by the time you guys see this, a week into um, the next knit along, which is Funky Town. And like I said, I, I'm going to guilt myself into getting up the threads for that before this episode goes out. I don't know why it takes me so long. I don't, because it's like, this is a little, little behind the scenes, but I actually have the rules written up and I just copy and paste them every single time. And so I don't know why it takes me so long to do it. It's just, it's been on my to-do list for a week now and I just haven't done it. So anyway, I will get that up. But um, yeah, so the theme is Funky Town and um, sort of that divides up into a color theme of neon and a technique theme of modular and or scrappy projects. And so this is gonna be one where sort of like the, the, the qualifiers are a little bit looser, right? So like in terms of neons, I don't know how necessarily to define neon and maybe I will define it a little bit differently when I actually put up the rules. And as usual, I will link um, at least if you're on the, the blog post, I will link to the to the chatter thread, which will have all the rules. If you're in the Ravelry group, just go back out and find the thread. Um, but it, with neon, it's basically like take a color, turn it up to 11. That's neon, right? Like I think we all kind of know what is and isn't neon. So I'm going to go with that. I will say that again, um, you know, sort of like the last one where, okay, to, to qualify under green, like at least 50% of the yarn had to be green. For this to qualify under neon, at least 50% of the yarn has to be neon of some form, right? So if you have, say, um, like a self-striping yarn with like six different colored stripes, at least three of those need to be neon colors. They don't have all have to be the same neon color, but they at least three of them need to be neon. Um, and again, if you have any questions about it, feel free to post in the chatter thread. So that's the color part is neon. The technique part, the modular and or scrappy, um, basically, so, so for modular, I'm going to define modular as anything which is made with like in pieces and then sort of put together at the end. So that includes things like, um, like amigurumi, those little crocheted stuffies, like those would be great for this. Um, it would include things like a seamed sweater, right? Like a sweater that's knit in pieces and then seamed up. That's great. Um, it would also include, um, some socks that, um, like I mentioned, the striped tees, um, socks, those are sort of made like in pieces as you go along, right? Sort of like a join as you go kind of thing. So, so things like that, things like, um, pole dance actually would have been a great one. That's also modular or things that are made with like motifs. Like a lot of crochet projects are made with different, mo like little motifs that are then put together at the end. So, so anything sort of like that, anything which is sort of made in pieces and then joined either at the end or as you go that's what I'm going to call modular. Um, but, but, you know, that's a pretty narrow sort of 
you know, project category. And a lot of people aren't really into that, which is why I'm also adding the scrappy part of it. So because scrappy is sort of like, I guess, a join as you go sort of thing, right? So, so things like, um, sort of like the scrappy Franken socks that a lot of people like to make where like they do, um, or, you know, sort of like the same theme as like advent socks where you do, you know, say 10 rows of one scrap yarn and then you switch to another and you do another 10 rows, right? So, so scrap socks or hats or whatever, that would totally work or a sweater even. Um, granny stripe blankets, like if you have your own granny stripe blanket or, um, oh, what's the other one? The um, cozy memories blankets, you know, where people do the little squares or like a crochet, like a granny square crochet like the squares, um, any of those would count. And for those, you don't actually have to finish it during the time of the cal, right? So, so normally the rules are, um, you know, you have to submit finished objects and they can be any weight yarn, any sort of pattern category, as long as it fits the technique or the color theme. And it has to be at least 50 grams worth of yarn. So if you are doing a scrappy project, um, you know, for something like scrappy socks that is reasonable to finish within two months, I would say you do have to finish that. But for something like a cozy memories blanket or a granny stripe blanket or like a big afghan that you're maybe knitting motifs for, um, for that you just have to add 50 grams worth of progress to what you've already done. Um, and, and we'll just kind of take your word for it. Like for, for that, I would just like you to post maybe a picture of like granny stripe before, granny stripe after, you know, like sort of just to show your progress on that. Um, but I, I will allow those kinds of things in because they, like I said, I know that modular is not everyone's bag. So hopefully that made sense when I just said it. Like I said, I will of course link to the, uh, to the, to the rules and um, that will be up by the time you guys see this. So you can go there and get a more condensed, hopefully more coherent version of what I just said. So yeah, that's the current Cal. I don't have yarn for it or prizes, prize yarn for it yet, but um, I will sort of be thinking about that. I believe the next one is speckles. So um, that's always fun. So I might, I might actually dye up something for that because I love dyeing speckled yarn. That's super fun. So yeah, so that's the knit along stuff. And question of the week. This is, okay, so uh, I just remembered. Question of the week last week was tell me about a cooking fail to make me feel not so bad about my cooking fail that I had last time. And you guys 100% delivered. You made me laugh so hard and made me feel so much better about myself. So I really appreciate that. And, and thank you for sharing your own cooking fails to help me feel better. That was, that was great. Um, so my question this week is again, not knitting related, but it is sort of a question that I feel is well posed to knitters. And that is recommend me some books to read. Um, I know I've, I've asked for this before, but I always sort of, you know, times change, right? People may have a, a new good book to read. And so this time, I've sort of, you know, fallen off my knitting mo or my reading mojo. And this happens, you know, kind of periodically, like I'll be really into reading for a little while and then I won't read anything for months. And so I want to get my reading mojo back because I want to spend less time like just watching Netflix and YouTube and stuff. So I would love some good book recommendations. Normally I read nonfiction. And so if you have a, a suggestion for nonfiction, that's great. But I, what I find when I really need to like get my mojo back is I really like to read fiction, like something that's just fun and fluffy and, you know, just like a, like a good action movie, but in book form. So what I, pr what I look for in sort of fiction is I really like thrillers or suspense kind of stuff. Um, I like books that move quickly. Um, I like, I don't really have like a preference in terms of like characters. Like I, I like strong female characters, but it's not a requirement. Um, I, I like things that are typically set in modern times and or in the future. I don't tend to read a lot of like historical pieces. Um, I really, as, as much as it pains me to say this, I really like Dan Brown's writing style. Like his writing style is really sort of what I like. Um, so if you, if you have any fiction ideas that sort of fit within that, let me know because I'm looking for some fiction to, uh, to, to sort of perk my interest back up again. I also like reading trashy romance novels, but again, I don't like historical pieces. I like pretty modern pieces that sort of have that like thriller suspense element to them. Um, so if you have any recommendations for those either, I'll take those too. Uh, but yeah, come at me, readers of the knitting community. Give me some book ideas. 
but yeah that's sort of all I have in terms of the knitting type stuff this week so if that's all you were here for thanks very much for hanging out with me and I will see you I think in another two weeks but I hmm now I have to think really quick because next weekend and then so the weekend after that might be the weekend that Wesley is coming to visit which might be a very busy weekend so we'll see kind of how my schedule looks I may wind up vlogging that weekend and then I'll do the fiber friends tag which I've been slacking on I don't know you should see me again in another two weeks um in what capacity who the heck knows but um but yeah if that's all you're here for thanks for hanging out and I will see you in another two weeks Otherwise, I'm going to go get myself some coffee. I started it brewing when I started this clip, so I think it's done now. So I'm gonna go get some coffee and we'll chit chat about the past two weeks and sort of what my month ahead is looking like. And I have an interesting movie to talk about. So yeah, lots to talk about on the chit chat front. So let me go get some coffee and I'll be right back. All right, I got my coffee, so let's Let's do this. Uh, those of you who have been around since Vlogmas, I think was when this happened, might recognize this mug. This is a mug from Starbucks that I had been lusting after for a long time at that point. Um, and it was really funny because I went and bought it one day because I you know, got done a lot of cleaning projects that I needed to get done. And then I sent a picture of it to Wesley and it turns out he had bought me the exact same mug because he knew I wanted it for Christmas. So he then wound up returning it. But I'm still completely in love with this mug, except for two things that like really annoy me about it. One is that it's only 10 ounces. Like it looks like it should hold more than 10 ounces. It's only 10 ounces because the walls of it are really thick, um, which is just sort of annoying because I'm a pig and I want a lot of coffee. But the other thing that annoys me is because of this like metallic paint on the outside, it cannot go in the microwave. And that wouldn't normally be a problem, except that I feel like it doesn't keep, I feel like it doesn't keep my coffee very warm. Like I feel like my coffee cools down really fast in it. And so it'd be nice if I could just pop it in the microwave for, you know, 15 seconds to warm back up, but I can't. So that is kind of annoying. I guess then it's a good thing that the capacity is so small because I drink it quickly enough about my mug. So let's talk about my life. So I think the last time that I recorded, um, I think that was right when all of the teaching labs had ended. Um, and so, you know, things were like sort of starting to wind down for me then, even though the semester wasn't over yet. So the semester just officially ended this past week. I think May 1st was like the last day of the semester. So now we're into final season. Which of course is always pretty crazy um and luckily i don't give finals and i'm done with all of my teaching and grading and stuff i've actually already submitted final grades for for the classes i taught um i do still have a final in the class that i'm taking which is actually on the 8th so if this episode goes up a little bit later in the day it's because I was taking my final and posted afterwards. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll post this episode late Monday night, who knows. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much then all I have left, which does not mean that it's smooth sailing from here on out because the rest of the month is just gonna be really crazy for me because I basically have until June 1st to rewrite um, probably half of the, um, well, maybe not half, maybe total, a quarter to a third of all of the teaching labs um, because I got a whole bunch of new equipment. I've talked about this a little bit before, but I got a whole bunch of new equipment. And so now I need to actually be pulling it out of boxes and testing it and rewriting the labs for it by June 1st so that I can get it off to our printers in time so that they can print the lab manuals for the summer so that I can like test everything out over the summer. Because the summer, you know, there's just less people there, there's less classes. So it gives me a good chance to like test out new things. So that's what I'm planning on doing over the summer. So I have, you know, the rest of May to get all of that done, which takes a non negligible amount of time, especially because I like just getting everything set up for the first time takes a long time and then sort of figuring out like, okay, how am I going to fold this into our existing structure? So that that takes some time. And then I also need to be preparing for the class that I'm going to be teaching over the summer, which is a modern physics class. It's the first time we're offering it over the summer. It's the first time I'm ever teaching a real lecture class. So I need to prepare for that, which starts basically at the same time summer labs do. So like, as I'm trying to get these summer labs written up, I also need to be preparing to teach this class. Um, and I also have, 
I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. I'm also the person in our department who goes around and like scans a whole bunch of things every year, like expensive things. I have to go around and scan a bunch of barcodes that get put on expensive stuff. So it turns out that also needs to get done by June 1st. So pretty cool. Um, which is fine. Um, I think I mentioned this last time I recorded, but you know, the stuff that I'm doing with rewriting the lab manuals, that's actually my favorite part of the job. It's the part of the job that I really enjoy because it's, you know, it's problem solving, it's figuring things out, it's it's creative work. I really enjoy that part of the work. And, and I feel like I will feel the same way when it comes to preparing the materials for the course I'll be teaching. Again, figuring out problems, doing creative work. I really enjoy that kind of stuff. It's, it's going around and scanning things. That is such a pain, but whatever. Um, so, so yes, I have a pretty busy month ahead. So yeah, so that's been most of my life lately. So I would like to really quickly talk about a movie that I watched yesterday. Um, yeah, I think I can do that before my computer freezes up by the size of the file that I'm recording. So I watched this movie yesterday and it's a Netflix original and um, it's called Anon, like short for anonymous. Um, and I don't really know how to link it because of course I don't know that you can link things on Netflix, but I'll see, like I'll look around on YouTube and see if I can find a trailer for it. And if I can find that, I'll link that. But um, I definitely would not suggest watching it if you have kids around because it has a lot of adult content. Um, it's definitely like an R-rated movie, like really R-rated. Um, but, but if you're an adult who doesn't have kids or you, you know, you can watch it after your kids go to bed, great. But it's sort of set in this, I can't tell like how far the future is. Like I, wa I wanna say near future, but it's sort of, I think it's meant to be very ambiguous, like how far in the future this thing is set. But it's sort of set in the future where everyone has, and again, they don't really explain this. Everyone has these like chips or something in their brain or some something. So when they look at things, like they get all of this like information about it. It's sort of like, like, there's like some computer in the brain that like gives them a bunch of information and they're all linked into this like central network. Um, and so basically the punchline is that in this futuristic society, nobody has any privacy anymore, right? Everything you see is being recorded and you can pull it back up anytime. So like crime is basically irrelevant and because you know, you can just look at what the people have seen. Um, like the cops can pull these files from other people's brains basically and see what they saw. It's really kind of creepy. And and so the, the whole craziness about it is that there's someone who is not in the system and, and like people start dying. And so I don't want to like spoil it or anything, but just the, the basic premise of the movie kind of weirded me out a little bit because like this whole premise of like privacy is the enemy. Like that's how I would sum up like this sort of future society is that like privacy is the enemy. And, and it was just creepy to watch. And I've had these thoughts before, like growing up at the time that I grew up, um, you know, so I'm 28 right now. I, you know, have sort of grown up as part of this sort of Facebook, MySpace, iPhone generation, whatever, um, where increasingly privacy is sort of, you know, people are more and more giving away their privacy by just posting things about themselves online. And more and more companies are trying to get around our wants for privacy to like figure out how to better market to us, you know? So it's like, I feel like privacy is both being given away at an increasing rate and being sort of encroached on at an increasing rate. And so this movie sort of like took it to like this logical extreme and it just is really creepy. And I highly recommend you watch it if, if it's the kind of thing you're interested in. Um, but it definitely is making me rethink just a lot of things about my life. Like I've, I've already been thinking a lot about like how much do I post about myself online and how much do I share about myself in public and like things like that. And like this movie just like, like I said, just gave me the heebie-jeebies and made me think about this just a little bit extra hard yesterday. So yeah, I definitely recommend watching it. It's really well done. Like I wouldn't have known that it was a Netflix original. Like I definitely could have seen this movie coming out in theaters you know, before Netflix. Like it definitely is a well-produced movie. Like it's a professional movie. Um, so yeah, I thought it was good and I highly recommend it. And I think it'll make you think about some things. So there's that. But um, yeah, I think that's about all I have for this week. Like I said, my clip that I'm recording on the computer is getting pretty big. So I should probably go ahead and 
sign off and say thanks very much for hanging out with me this week. And like I said, I'll see you guys again in two weeks in some capacity or another. And yeah, have a good one and see you later. Bye.